In the Verdun of Africa, there lived a young boy named Chike. His village, a harmonious blend of huts and nature, lay at the edge of a vast savanna, where the golden grass whispered secrets of the ancient land. Chike was entrusted with the care of the village's most prized possession, the Watusi cattle, a breed renowned for their majestic horns and the wealth they bestowed upon their keepers. Chike, with a spirit as wild as the wind and a heart yearning for adventure beyond the horizon, found the daily routine of tending to the cattle boring. His soul ached for excitement, for tales to tell that would etch his name in the annals of his people's history. It was this desire that led him down a path woven with mischief and woven with the threads of consequence. To satiate his thirst for amusement, Chike concocted a plan that would send ripples through the fabric of his life and the community that had nurtured him. He decided to test the bonds of trust and camaraderie that held his village together with the spirit of the lion, the king of the savanna, whose roar alone could silence the chorus of the wilderness. One day, under the blazing African sun, Chike ran into the village, his voice laced with fiend terror shouting, Lion! Lion! A lion is attacking the Watusi cattle! The villagers, gripped by a collective fear for their prized cattle and driven by the instinct to protect, armed themselves with spears and shields, rushing out to confront the beast. But upon arriving at the grazing fields, they were met with a sight of tranquility. The cattle grazed peacefully, unthreatened, under the watchful eyes of the silent trees. Chike, unable to hold back his laughter, revealed his ruse. The villagers, their faces painted with relief and annoyance, scolded Chike for his deceit, warning him of the perils such falsehoods could invite. Undeterred, Chike repeated his deception in the following weeks. Each instance, crafting a deeper fissure in the trust the villagers had in him. With every false alarm, the fabric of their community frayed, threads of belief and reliance unwinding until they lay bare, vulnerable to the truths of the world beyond their village. The inevitable came to pass on a day when the sky was painted with the hues of an impending storm, a day when destiny would heed the call of Chike's actions. A lone lion, its mane a crown of the savannah, its eyes reflecting the untamed wilderness prowled closer to the village, driven by hunger and the primal instinct to hunt. Chike, stationed at the outskirts with the Watusi cattle, spotted the predator. His heart, once filled with mischief, now pounded with genuine fear. He understood the gravity of the danger, a realization that came crashing down like the thunder that rumbled in the distance. Racing back to the village, Chike's cries of alarm once again pierced the air. Lion! The lion is upon us! It seeks the cattle! But his warnings, tainted by the shadow of his past deceits, fell on deaf ears. The villagers, hardened by betrayal, dismissed his pleas as another jest. Meanwhile, the lion, embodying the very essence of the savannah's ruthless beauty, launched his attack. The Watusi cattle, despite their majestic appearance, were no match for the king of beasts. The savannah bore witness to a grim ballet, a dance of predator and prey, orchestrated by the laws of nature and the folly of a boy. By the time Chike returned, the aftermath of the lion's feast lay before him. The loss was catastrophic, a blow to the heart of the village that would be felt for generations. The boy, once full of laughter and dreams, now stood as a figure of sorrow, his spirit broken by the weight of his actions. The villagers, confronted with reality of Chike's final warning, could no longer contain their grief and rage. The elders convened beneath the ancient baobab. They deliberated not just on Chike's fate, but on the fabric of trust that binds a community. Their decision was somber yet resolute. 
Chike was to be banished for a decade, a sentence that spoke of the gravity of his deceit. As Chike ventures into the expanse of the savannah, the reality of his banishment enveloped him like the dusk. Each step away from the village was a heavy reminder of his trust he had shattered. A trust so fundamental, yet so fragile. The savannah, with its untamed beauty and relentless challenges, became his silent companion, reflecting back to him the consequences of his actions. Years unfurled under the vast African sky, each day a lesson in survival and solitude. Chike, once the boy who sought to weave excitement into his life through fabrications, now longed for nothing more than the simple truths he had forsaken. The savannah taught him much about the natural order of life, where every creature's survival hinged not on deceit, but on the stark realities of existence. Chike never made the journey back. The savannah, with its harsh lessons and rugged beauty, had become his home, a place where he found a semblance of peace amidst the echoes of his past. The village moved forward with time, the memory of Chike fading like the footprints in the sand, but the lesson of his tale grew roots deeper than the ancient baobab. The moral of Chike's story, whispered on the wind and etched in the heart of the savannah, became a stark warning of the tragedies born from lies. It taught that deceit, no matter its guise or intention, is a beast more formidable than the lion that prowls the savannah. Lies, once set into motion, traverse a path of destruction that can sever the soul from its loved ones, leaving a chasm too vast to bridge. In his absence, Chike became a cautionary tale, a shadowy figure in the village's collective memory that served as a reminder of the fragile nature of trust and the irrevocable damage wrought by falsehood. His story, passed down through generations, became a moral compass for the village, guiding them towards a future where honesty formed the cornerstone of their existence. If you don't want to miss the most exciting African folktales, make sure to subscribe. Till next time.